Alright, in this video I'm going over the Beta Delta model, which is also hyperbolic discounting, um, and all these terms are sort of about the same model. Time inconsistency is a feature of this model, myopia is just the fact that people prefer the present over the future, they prefer to receive good things in the present and push bad things off into the future, that's captured by the concept of myopia, which is modeled through the Beta Delta model, which we also call hyperbolic discounting, or a little bit more accu accurately, quasi-hyperbolic discounting, but um, I think this is shortened to hyperbolic discounting over the years, everyone knows what this is. This is a behavioral economics model, and it's how we capture things like procrastination, compulsive eating, lots of compulsive behaviors that have to do with delaying bad things and moving good things into the present. All that kind of stuff is captured through this model. So I'm going to explain the model today and I will show you how it appears in a model and then we'll go through an example in terms of how it works. The specific example I'm going to go over has to do with learning Excel tricks now to save yourself time in the future, which is really something you should do, but people procrastinate, they put it off, and that's what we're modeling. Alright, so here's a picture of the Beta Delta discounting model, and for comparison we're comparing it to the classic discounting utility model, and they look pretty similar. As a matter of fact, you might notice the only difference between these two models is going to be beta. And I'll explain these in a second, but first of all, I want you to think about beta, which is less than 1, as a haze over the future. So it's, it's basically a binary variable distinguishing any period that's right now, when you're experiencing emotions, when everything matters so much because you feel everything in the moment, um, and it's separating that in a binary way from everything that's in the future, which is experienced by the future self that you don't yet embody, you don't yet feel. So it's essentially putting this haze over the future such that everything moving forward is worth less. Now, we've still got everything in the future divided by 1 plus r to the power of however many time periods in the future you are. That's true in both models. As a matter of fact, I like to use the 1 plus r, but just to be clear, when we're talking about delta, delta in the beta delta model is equal to 1 over 1 plus r. I just like to write it this way because I can see visually automatically, oh, this is time discounting, I'm used to time discounting. When you wrap it up in a beta, it's just more difficult for me to see when I'm immediately looking at a model. In any case, these are the same thing, the delta in the beta delta model is just our classic standard 1 over 1 plus r, and as you move into the future, delta, the 1 over 1 plus r, gets squared, cubed, taken to the fourth, etc, etc, into the future. Now, these two models look pretty similar, so the question is, why do we even need this beta? Can't we just capture whatever we need to by having a lower delta um, instead of having beta less than 1? Why do we need the beta? And this is a challenging concept, but I will tell you first, you're going to have to believe me first, and then when you walk through a few examples, you'll see how it works. But the, the thing that you can get with beta delta discounting that you cannot get through classic discounting is time inconsistency. Now, what is time inconsistency? Well, time inconsistency is going to be a feature of the model that allows you to mispredict your own behavior. So procrastination is basically you saying, I'm optimizing my utility now, I'll do it tomorrow. But in fact, you will not do it tomorrow. You'll arrive at tomorrow, you'll do the same optimization problem, and you'll say, nope, I'll do it the next day. And then the same thing happens the next day. So in the moment you predict that you'll do it tomorrow, that that's a good thing for you to do. But you end up doing it never because you're, you're mis-optimizing over time. And this makes a little more sense when you see it on a graph. So let me show you time inconsistency on a graph before I go through that example that I just explained. Alright, so first let's look at the classic discounting utility model and how that varies over a time horizon. So here on the x-axis we have time horizon, and anytime you have the word horizon, this means that when we look at this fifth period, that's the fifth period from the perspective of today, looking forward toward that fifth period. And on the y-axis we have value, or present value in this case, 
So at period zero, we have 100%. And it looks like in this case, um, there's about an 80% discount rate every period. So if we go, um, going from period zero to one, um, whatever this value is X at period one, X is going to be 80% of whatever it was in period zero, which in this case was one. Um, but that, that's true, so, so if going from zero to one, we have 80% or the decline's 20%, we have period one is 80% of what it was in period zero. Now that's going to be true every point along this line. So if we pick a random pair of time periods going from period five to period six, if we look at the value at period five, let's call that Y, and the value at period six, let's call that Z, we know that Z is 80% of Y. So basically, any two random periods, whether that's between period 0 and 1, period 5 and 6, period 100 and period 101, the difference, the, the decline between the periods is 80%. The, any next period is going to be 80% of the previous period, and that's true wherever you're starting from. So that's time consistency. In which case, what is time inconsistency and how does that show up on the map? All right, now in the purple, I've drawn the beta delta version of this model. In this case, we not only have delta, we need a beta too. So in my previous example, I let delta equal 0.8, and that was true of any two consecutive periods on the map. Now we need both beta and delta, where beta is going to represent the decline between periods zero and period one. And then delta is the steady decline per period every period after that. So, um, between period 0 and 1, we know that uh, at period 1, we're at 50% of the value of period 0. Um, but then after that, it's going to be declining by 0.9 of the time before. So, this is time inconsistent because the, the drop between period 0 and 1 is different than every single other period. Any other random period you pick between periods 4 and 5, um, period 5 is going to be 90% of period four. Period seven to eight, um, period eight is 90% of period seven. However, from period zero to one, that's going to be a 50% drop. So the decline over time is not consistent across all time. And so why does that matter? Why does time consistency even come into play? Well, it comes into play because right now you think the drop between period three and four is going to be is that there will be a 10% drop in value between period seven and eight. That's what you believe about your own preferences over the future. However, that's not going to be true once you actually arrive in period seven. When you arrive in period seven and you're looking ahead into period eight, period seven is now going to be period zero. It's now the current state. And so moving into that next period, the actual decline for you between those two periods will be 50%. You have this huge windfall between now and the future. So, so if you believe that this is sort of your value for things over the future, it's a huge drop between now and the next period, but after that, um, it's a pretty smooth decline. And after that, there's not that much difference between period three and four, between period five and six. If that's what you believe, then you have false preferences about your own value over time. And those false preferences could mislead you to make bad decisions for yourself, such as procrastinating, such as eating compulsively where you'll feel really bad the next day. Um, the fact that this is time inconsistent is going to lead to choices that you regret. And of course, that's so human. Humans actually do make choices that we regret. So this model, the beta delta model, is going to capture that much better. As a matter of fact, um, the, the classic discounting utility model cannot capture time inconsistency. It cannot capture regret in your decision making. And so by just adding this one extra tool of beta, which is a haze over the future, this term adds a lot of new powerful insights into human behavior that we can build into our models. 
All right, now I'm going to go over a numerical example of the hyperbolic discounting model versus the classic discounting utility model and show you how the hyperbolic discounting model can capture procrastination. And this is an example that I learned in grad school from Matt Rabin, who was teaching the graduate behavioral economics course at the time, and I love this example. I still teach it in my classes. So here it is. The example is you could spend 120 minutes today learning Excel tricks. And if you learn those Excel tricks today, it's going to save you 10 minutes a day every period starting tomorrow and definitely into the future. And you're going to try to make the decision between three options. One is you learn the Excel tricks today. The second option is you learn the Excel tricks tomorrow. And then the third option is you never learn the Excel tricks. So first I'm going to give you some numbers for how this would work out under the classic discounting utility model. Alright, so in this case we um, get negative 120 utils from the 120 minutes we spend today learning the Excel tricks, but we gain 10 utils every period for starting tomorrow and definitely into the future. We're discounting at a rate of return of 5%. And you can use some mathematical rules to solve infinite series to actually solve this. So your total utility from learning these Excel tricks today is going to be 80. Now let's do the same exercise except um, what if instead of learning these tricks today, you spent zero time today learning them, but instead moved this 120 into tomorrow. So you can see I just ha had zero utility for today since we're not doing anything. We're pushing off the negative 120 utils till tomorrow, but then we gain the 10 utils every period after that. And that's going to give you um, utility of 76.19. And so we can see it's better to learn the Excel tricks today. Um, and of course, what's the utility if you learn these never? Alright, so if we're choosing between these three, two, three options, and we are a classic discounter, um, we're choosing between 80, 76, and 0, it's very clear that the best option is to learn the Excel tricks today. But of course, with procrastination, we know that people oftentimes um, choose the option, learn it tomorrow, thinking that they actually will follow through, but they get to tomorrow and they do the same optimization problem and they put it off till the next day and they end up never actually learning the Excel tricks um, when they could have gotten a lot of utility had they actually just gotten it over with and done it they end up never doing it. That's a behavior that is common we want to be able to model it, but it's actually impossible to get that situation with classic discounting. You actually do need the beta in the beta delta model to make that happen. So let me walk through these same numbers, except instead of a classic discounter, we have a beta delta discounter. And once again, I'll use the 5% rate of return, but um, beta delta, we're just going to stick a beta in front of each of these, and the beta I'm going to use is 0 0.9, where we're interpreting beta as a haze over the future. All right, I've redone the numbers using a beta equals 0 0.9, and we find in this case for the beta delta discounter, the utility from learning today is 60. For the beta delta discounter, the utility from learning tomorrow is 68. And uh, just like the hyperbolic, or just like the classic discounter, their utility from learning never is zero. In which case, the best option for them is to learn it tomorrow. So they see those three utilities, 60, 68, 0. They choose the utility of 68. They choose to learn it tomorrow. What they don't expect is that when they arrive at tomorrow, they're going to have the same exact optimization problem. They're going to say, oh my gosh, spending 120 minutes to learn the Excel tricks is so burdensome today. I'm experiencing all these emotions. So the choice this person is going to make is they're going to learn it tomorrow. What they do not realize is that when they actually arrive at tomorrow, um, they're going to rerun the same optimization problem, and they're going to choose to do it the next day. 
and then they'll choose it to do it the next day and they'll end up doing it never. So they get utility of zero at the end of the day. They could have gotten utility of 60 just by doing it today, but the fact that they mispredict their behavior, they mispredict their own choices, means they think they'll do it tomorrow to get a utility of 68, but they end up doing it never. And the reason for that is that the future has this haze over it where it's really painful to do bad things today, such as put all the effort into learning these Excel tricks, but when they think about tomorrow, they just sort of imagine themselves doing it. They don't sort of feel all the emotional and effort burden that goes along with experiencing the moment. So with hyperbolic discounting, we can get situations where people's choices are bad for them, where their choices lead to regret. And we actually cannot get that out of the classic discounting utility model. Now, if you're still confused why we can't get this kind of result out of the classic discounting utility model, you're not alone. When I first encountered this, I was really puzzled for a couple of weeks trying to figure this out. And there's two ways you can figure this out. Um, one is you can just go ahead and do the proof that um, that you cannot get this result out of the classic discounting utility model. And maybe I'll do a video with the proof eventually. Um, the other thing you can do is you can actually just sit down in Excel and try to make this happen in Excel. Go ahead and try to use these numbers. Th these work out pretty well. And see if you can come up with a value for delta or a value for the rate of return, which here is 5%. You could change it to 4%. You could change it to 1%. To 10%, try to come up with a value for that in the classic discounting utility model that will get the person to choose to learn it tomorrow. And what you're going to find is that you cannot come up with any such value that will lead them to, to learn it tomorrow. Either they're going to they're choose to learn it today or they're going to choose to learn it never. They will never choose this irrational option that leads to regret of learning it tomorrow. So that's just an overview of the beta delta discounting model, which is hyperbolic discounting, and it's a super powerful model if you want to capture compulsive overeating, procrastination, and all of these kinds of human behaviors that we see all the time. I hope you found this helpful, and I hope you've enjoyed learning behavioral economics.